Now, you wanting to build stronger self-esteem and confidence. Well, today I'm going to share three keys in order to improve each one of these. And if you stay until the end, I have an extra point for you then. Now, I was having a conversation with someone on their show earlier, or live, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, a good friend of mine, and she basically asked me, it's quite like an open, open kind of floor to me, whereby she wanted me to share what's like some of the keys to confidence and self-esteem, which is obviously quite a broad subject, and it's a great conversation. So I shared my key, uh, which is the triangle, the triangle that I believe can boost and it's worked for me and I, I see it working for other people, but it's a triangle I worked out. It's got three parts to it that can really boost your self-esteem and confidence if you utilize it consistently and you actually take action and actually action is one of them on it. And really, for me, this 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 model developed is my own model. Uh, this model developed, and I've not named it or anything like that. Let's call it the Pardo Triangle for now. <laughs> um, it's not copyrighted or anything like that. I just want to share a little bit of experience with you uh, today. So really, it came about from 2019 when I was really struggling. I was really not feeling good on life, and I didn't like myself. Even on the outside, you know, I had these things going. Um, I had a good career. I was well liked by most people. You know, I was reasonably good looking. Um, I was athletic. I was winning like football awards. So, you know, pretty good life on the outside. But, you know, I had some personal setbacks and dating challenges. And it really, really made me feel rubbish. And that's because I hadn't worked on my self-esteem. And self-esteem is how much you like yourself. Confidence is the trust you have in yourself. And therefore, I felt I got into really bad drinking habits, really bad eating habits. I just felt really bad about my life. And I got to such a low point. I was crying on the floor on holiday, uh, away from my mates when he, uh, mate when he went to the beach. And I knew I had to do something about it. And so I set a mission out to gradually improve my habits and really learn about self-esteem and confidence. And at the end of that year, I started this podcast, of course, and I was still on my journey then. I was still learning and growing. And when I really started uh, learning more, I started realizing there were this very simple fundamentals and actually how simple improving your self-esteem and confidence is. Now, I want to be really clear. I didn't say easy. I did not say it's easy. Simple is different from easy. Simple means it's simple to understand. Like, and what you've got to do is straightforward. Easy means it's not necessarily, means like you can just do it with ease, like, there's no real challenges, which is not true because there are challenges. Like it's, it's the same with other areas of life, like relationships, like fitness. It's actually quite simple what to do, but it's not easy because it's mainly us who gets in the way, these mental barriers. So that's what I want to share with you today. And I want to keep it super simple. So you make it more simple, you make it more consistent. So when it gets hard, you can keep going. Now, why is it we have challenges in self-esteem and confidence? It's because the world's constantly testing it. Like the world can be a great place, but there's also some challenges. There's lots of negativity out there. You know, there's like COVID, there's wars, there's financial challenges. There's always be, there's always something going on. Uh, and there's also a lot of comparison in the world. Uh, lots of people comparing themselves to others. We see someone's best life and we're like, our oh, life's rubbish in comparison. And the other thing I believe is obviously self-esteem and confidence, not obviously, but self-esteem and confidence is shaped by our experiences. We're not taught this in school. Now, some people are really against the, the school system and the personal growth world. I'm not. Now, that's not because I got two amazing parents who were teachers. It's just I believe school did teach me a lot of values and we're not going to go into a debate about school. Yeah, I do believe we're not taught enough about self-esteem and confidence in my personal view. And I'd like to see that more from a younger age, given to given the kids, uh, how they can really develop it. And I remember giving a speech to a, a college and they really, really valued it. In fact, that's something I'd love to do a little bit more of. Uh, just give me an idea. <laughs> Intention for 2023. So I want to give you some practical points today, but like, how is it helping you just getting in this 
it's oh self-esteem is really complicated confidence is really complicated oh i can never do anything i can't change it i'm just going to stay have a low self-esteem and low confidence and let it impact on those around me how is that serving you because i realize it didn't help me and in fact it was selfish to keep me in those points now it's not selfish or your fault if bad things happen to you no absolutely not you know there's some terrible things that can happen in life and some bad things um and it's not always our fault um what shapes us it is our responsibility i believe 100 percent, to change and define our confidence and self-esteem whatever your circumstance there's been exceptional cases like people who have lost the loose of their use of their limbs people who have lost people close to them have been natural disasters and they even though it's so hard like they've come out fighting the amount what human beings are capable of is amazing so i believe it's absolutely our responsibility to take control of it now if you're if you're listening right now i don't believe that's you because you wouldn't be listening this far into you wouldn't be looking for help with your self-esteem and confidence if you didn't believe you had some kind of control over it but there are people out there like oh, i can't do anything about it i'm not in control of it and you've got to ask them is it doing them any favors so let's go into the three parts of the triangle. The first part is your psychology and mindset. Now, what's the difference between the two? Um, mindset is your specific attitude or behavior towards things in life. And you need a good mindset to start off with. People say mindset is everything. It's not everything. It's a good starting point. Now you need it. You need to have a good attitude towards something. And psychology is the ongoing thought processes consciously and subconsciously, some of the things you're not even aware of until you really work on yourself, going on in the back of your mind. And it's your thoughts. And what thoughts, in a very simple way, words and pictures. So therefore, you need to have a good mindset and then work on your psychology again and again and again. Now, how do you work on your psychology? Well, the main few ways that I'm going to share is first of all, you've got to change the words, how you describe yourself, how you describe the world, how you describe other people. When you start paying attention to those words and what you're saying, start sh sharing empowering language with yourself every single day. Start saying words of emotion, create an identity statement. Using the words, anything you say after the words I am is going to create an identity to you. So start saying powerful things to you every single day. The other thing is uh, pictures. Uh, start visualizing yourself as you <clears throat> excuse me yourself in a confident position like you're really confident at a skill visualize that and this triangle applies for both self-esteem and confidence for self-esteem for improving yourself and for confidence for having trust in a certain area uh, and conf and you can be confident in one thing and not another but let's say we're looking at being confident in something specific here Okay, so then you visualize, you're saying the words, that's going to change your psychology. And then the other part is breath work or journaling or something to release some of the negativity. Because if you start doing all this positive stuff, but you've got so much negativity in there, it's going to be hard to get it in. Now, it's always an ongoing process because negative things are going to come into our system, whether we like it or not. Now, you can reduce that by hanging out with good people and listening to good information. But make sure you're just becoming more conscious of that. Now to release the negativity, breath work is a really key thing because it finds trauma stored in the body. And it's not necessarily in our mind, it's in our body. So you may have had an incident when you're young or maybe in work where it's really dramatic and that significant emotional event still stays in your body and it's there, it's within you. And what breath work does, I would suggest somatic breath work going to them. They're really, really good. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, they've also got a website. You, you can release all sorts of emotions. Now, it's going to be emotional when you do that, but it's so relieving. Like the amount of times I've cried when I've done that process is incredible, uh, but it's such a good feeling. So that's what I'd say for working in psychology. You've got to release the emotions, the negativity within you, the limiting beliefs, all those kind of things through things like breath work journaling and start focusing on your thoughts in terms of your words and pictures to create good psychology. Uh, to therefore feed your mindset uh, so you can keep that good attitude towards something. If you don't tackle your psychology, then the mindset will not last. 
Okay, so that's the first part. The second part, and all three parts are needed, by the way, of this triangle. I'll explain that at the end. The second part is your actions and your activities. So what's an action? Action is something you do one-off. Like uh, you want to join the gym, so you take action to sign up for a six-month uh, PT session and a gym membership. Great. That's really good, by the way, because you got the accountability. Um, and people are like, oh, that's expensive. I'll tell you what's expensive, not having good health um or a house that's that's expensive <laughs> so all right start investing in yourself okay that's a side note i'm very passionate about that subject because it's dummy wonders um so yeah like you take an action to invest in yourself and get a pt whatever maybe even join a gym you don't have to get a pt but maybe you commit you sign up for a month of classes or something a, a little bit cheaper um okay that's an action an activity is something you do again and again and again other known as a otherwise known as a habit so uh something you do consistently so you wouldn't just go to the gym one off you go again and again and again now if you want to get good at public speaking a massive fear for many people you don't just do it once that's going to give you a bit of a boost of confidence yeah if you push through your fears and do like a one minute update in the public speaking forum like Toastmasters. Yeah, you're going to be like, yeah, I can actually do this. But then if you stop doing it, you're not going to develop consistent confidence in public speaking. So you need to do something again and again, even if it's tiny, even if you've got to break it down. Like maybe you just say hello to one stranger a day, like in the street. Now that's quite scary in itself. And most people don't do that, especially in the UK. We're very anti like social at times. <laughs> People just shy from each other. I walk past a few people in the morning. It's like, good morning, good morning, blank, blank, blank. Hello, good morning. And that is a great connection with one person. Um, okay, so you got your action and activity. Uh, so you got to do things because when you do things, you're going to get result, more chance of getting results. You're not going to get results if you don't do anything. Sounds It is simple again, but our head gets in the way. And I'll, I'll say how these are all tired at the end so you can really take something away. And then the third bit is self-awareness. You've got to be conscious of your, your actions, activities, and your psychology and mindset. So start paying attention to actually what are the thoughts saying, what are you actually doing. Start doing an assessment every single week of yourself. That one's very simple uh, or very quick to explain. They're all simple. Now, you need all three. Why do you need all three? Well, self-awareness, you don't know how you're doing if you don't review yourself. That should speak for itself. Um if you just work on the psychology and mindset, uh, okay, that's a good start. But if you're not doing anything to support your confidence, so say you're wanting to get confident, more confident in social situations, you start changing the words and pitches like, I'm great socially, people like me, all these kind of things. You get out some of the limiting things out of your system, and then you find yourself making no effort to socialize with anyone. Guess what? Your psychology is not going to last because it starts picking up well, they're not doing anything. Therefore, they have no confidence in their social abilities. Okay, we are rubbish at socializing. They go back. Okay, so you need to take the action as well. Now, what happens if you just take the action and the activities? Uh, that's probably better than just doing the uh, the psychology. But what, hap what happens is you, you do all these hard things. And when you have bad days... Your self-talk can get the better of you if you're not working on your psychology and mindset. So you're taking action, for example, to socialize uh, and it's, cons um, it's all activity and you're consistently doing it. You have a, a, a couple of bad days. You try You go to a social event and people aren't against you. They just uh, they're just like rude or they're just shy themselves. Um, and you try to say hello and they just blank you. Then you take it personally and think, oh, it's me. Uh, but you're not working your psychology and your mindset. Then what your self-taught will start getting in and being like, well, they don't like you. Nobody likes you and all that kind of thing. Um, and therefore, it's going to reduce the chance of you doing any action activity because your self talks not good. So that's why it's so important to do both. Now, obviously, if you keep getting results, you're going to improve the talk to yourself. So ideally... I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm, you know, a big fan of those who do say, don't just do affirmations in the mirror, take action. hundred percent do both. Like do incantations. They're like when you say things with meaning and emotion and you move your body. So 
Make sure you're both working on your psychology, which is the words and pitches in your head and releasing the ones that don't serve you. And you're taking action and activity as well as the self-awareness. So that is key to self-esteem and confidence. Why is it absolutely key? Um, self-esteem is a relationship with yourself. So if you've got the psychology, like I'm lovable, I'm a wonderful human being, you start like talking to yourself nicely, all those kind of things. And then uh, your actions, activity, you look after your body, you look after your mind, you treat yourself now and then when you want to. Uh, you allow, you put boundaries up, you allow good people into your life and don't allow negative, toxic people into your life. Um, then, you know, you've got like two parts of it and then you're self-aware. You just keep being conscious of your relationship and those things. That's going to develop good self-esteem. Uh, with confidence in something, we use the example of uh, socializing earlier so that you you've worked on your psychology of talk how you're picturing yourself what you're saying to yourself releasing the negative stuff you're um taking action to consistently put yourself out there uh which is going to increase the chances of results and then you got your self-awareness okay so that's my triangle i haven't named it yet but that's the parlo triangle those three things are really going to build your self-esteem and confidence now I just want to say a final point. I've got a real uh, an extra point for you as well that I'm going to share in a minute. Um, I just want to appreciate you for listening today as well. Like I really, really value you. And if you're someone who is currently working on like a business idea, you're wanting to really kickstart your business, then I've got a limited amount of one-to-one -one spots. Now, they may be gone by the time you message me, so I'd be quick if I you, already in conversations. Um, so all you got to do is message me the word grow on Instagram or email me to uh, the word grow to coaching at johnnyparlo.com. So those are limited space. So um, if you're looking to start a business and you want a bit of business and confidence coaching, then we can have a chat to see if it's a possibility for you. Okay, so my final point that I wanted to share with you today is basically look at someone that you admire with good self-esteem or confidence in an area and learn to role model that. What the kind of things they believe about themselves, what the actions and activities that and what the actions and activities they're taking. And then you start incorporating that into yourself and then becoming and the self-aware piece is you just start like you don't want to become them. You're just taking some good traits that you can see in yourself and then you keep modeling that. So, again, that's what I've got for you today. If you're really looking to actually not hold yourself back, like I said, uh, frustrating yourself with a lack of confidence, a lack of self-esteem because you're just not moving. You say you're going to do something and you're not, then just message me the word grow to uh, coaching at johnnypollo.com or to Instagram, depending on how many spots I have left. Uh, so that's what I've got for you today. I appreciate you for being here. You're improving other people's lives for being the best you. And remember, you're in control of your own self-esteem and confidence.